So let's look at blocks sliding on planes. So a mass, some mass on a plane. Uh, we'll model it with friction. Okay. And this thing is a uh, plane is in the Earth's gravitational field, but it's inclined, uh, inclined at some angle to the ground. Okay. And then we adjust our coordinate system respectively. So let's have a look at that. So we've got here a block of mass six kilograms is dragged up an inclined plane so there's some force dragging it up um, uh, the plane is inclined to to the horizontal at 30 degrees coefficient of friction mu is 0 0.2 and um, friction the friction force is the coefficient of friction times the reaction force fr here okay find the force if the acceleration caused the speed of the particle, the block here that is, to go from 0 to 2 meters per second in 10 seconds. All right. So the block has gone from rest up to a speed of 2 meters per second, Okay, because some force has supplied that, causing it to accelerate up the plane. <clears throat> okay, well, in modeling this situation, we need to be aware of the angle of inclination, so there's 30 degrees for the plane here. We need to set up for ourselves, draw the block here, okay? And we have, again, the particle model comes into use. So we imagine all the, all the mass of the block is concentrated as geometric center there at that point here. So we're just going to this point here. Imagine it's geometric center, all its mass is concentrated there. And then all the forces will act through that point. So the force up the plane, the frictional force uh, uh, reacting against the motion, all right? The reaction force, and then the weight force. So we, we have our inclined plane drawn, the angle shown to give us the surface. We place the block on there. We draw a dot in the center to represent the, all the mass acting in the center there, our particle model. And all the forces will act through that point. And then what we start doing is we draw a force parallel up the plane because there's a force driving it up the plane. There's a friction force resisting that motion and that acts down the plane. Okay, um, perpendicular to the plane is our reaction force because the block can't accelerate into this solid plane. It's not accelerating away, as we'll see why in a moment. Okay, so we draw the reaction force is vertical to the plane because the plane pushes back. The mass can't push its way into the plane, so it reacts and holds the mass up, the surface of the plane. Now, then the next thing we need to do is opposite the reaction force, we draw in this dotted line here, and then we draw in the weight force. Now, the weight force acts perpendicularly down, okay? Perpendicular to the horizontal surface. This is down towards the center of the Earth, okay? Or whatever body this inclined plane is on, whatever um, planet or object that has mass in the universe and so has a gravitational field. Now, on the Earth, our acceleration due to gravity would be 9.82 meters per second per second. Okay, so we draw this vertically towards the center of the Earth, okay, towards the, the center of the body on which all this sits. And then next thing, we need to choose a direction. We need to choose which is going to be the positive direction for motion and which is going to be the negative. Okay, so we're going to choose, since the particle is moving up the plane, might as well choose that to be the positive direction. We don't have to. Um, it just it makes it easier in this case, um, but we don't have to. But whatever directions you choose to be positive, you must be consistent. The opposite direction must be negative. Okay, so we'll put the reaction force in the positive direction. The mass is six kilograms, so the weight force is the weight force is mg. If you like the weight force, mass times acceleration due to gravity, and that's six g. That's down here. Now you notice. Um, if this uh, block were not sitting on the inclined plane, if it was sitting on the flat horizontal surface, then this angle here would be zero, and the weight force would still be perpendicular to the um, horizontal plane, but this would be zero. So as the plane's lifted up, we realize this must be 30 degrees. The geometry of the situation tells us it must be 30 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> R is the reaction normal force. All right. Now, so what we need to do is look at the block here and then we need to deal with all the forces in the i direction that's parallel to the plane and then then all the forces in the j direction that's perpendicular to the plane okay let's start with the i direction okay well we have f up the plane okay so and that's in a positive direction so it's just plus f we have minus fr the friction force 
because that's acting down the plane in the negative direction, the negative I direction. Okay, um, now we have here, a this weight force can be resolved into two components. There's this component, okay, parallel to the perpendicular, and there's this component, which is perpendicular to the normal component. Now this is parallel down the plane. You can see this force acts down this way. It acts in the negative I direction. Okay, and this component here will be mg sine theta. Okay, that's going to go in here. That's that component there. All right, and that bit there, because here's the weight force, this is 30 degrees. Okay, so this is the sine component of it. So if I were to write that as sine theta. Here's theta in here, okay? Sine theta is opposite on hypotenuse, okay? So it's going to be some value here, okay, on the hypotenuse, which is 6g, okay? So whatever that value is, that component, okay, which is, if you like, f, um, f in the i direction, I'll call it. Okay, then F in the I direction will be 6G, whoops, let me get rid of that, I didn't mean to write G twice, 6G sine theta, okay, and theta of course being the 30 degrees. Okay, so it is, so what we have now, looking at all the forces now, we have plus F, plus F, okay, minus FR, minus FR, and minus 6G sine 30, or MG sine 30, but 6G sine 30, okay. Now, mu is 0 0.2, uh, R is unknown at this point, so we have plus F minus 0 0.2 times R, minus 6G sine theta, and if you remember, as I've said previously, um, F net, F net, the net force in the I direction, if we sum up all those forces, the net force in the I direction will be equal to MA, which in this case is 6A. Okay, in all of these problems, F net for each of the component directions is always the mass of the object times acceleration. Newton's second law. Okay, so there's our first equation. Now we're going to go to the vertical direction. And I'll probably just go a touch off screen here. Let's set that up first. Okay, so, well, in the plus direction, we have R. And then in the minus direction, that's this component down here. This is the cos component, okay? Just as we had mg sine theta, this one is mg cos theta by the same reasoning here. Okay, and that goes in there, mg cos theta. So we have R minus mg cos theta is zero because there's no net force in this direction. The block doesn't accelerate into the plane, it doesn't accelerate out of the plane, okay? It just maintains its place there, sitting on the surface. Because these two forces, R and Mg cos 30 degrees, are balanced, exactly balanced. They exactly cancel each other out. Well, okay, solving that second one, we get R equals 6G cos theta. Well, if R is 6G cos theta, that means we can enter equation, we can substitute into equation one, where R is, we can put 6G cos 30 degrees. So that first equation becomes F minus 0 0.2 times 6G cos 30 degrees minus 6G sine 30 degrees is 6A. Okay, and that means that F, the net force, okay, is 1.2 times G times cos 30 degrees plus 6G sine 30 degrees Okay, plus 6A, this unknown 6A. Remember the net force acting on the system? Okay. All right. Now, what are we going to do? Because we need to find out, we know what the, we can work out what the net acceleration is because we were told that the, while this force acted, the speed of the block went from zero meters per second to up to a speed of two meters per second, and it did that across 10 seconds. So we can work out the acceleration from V equals U plus AT. 
Okay, solving for a, we get v minus u on t. And so that acceleration must be 2 minus 0 on 10 is 2 on 10 is 1 fifth is 0.2 meters per second per second. That was the acceleration acting over 10 seconds. Okay, so that what that means now is we can go back to equation 2 and we can eliminate a altogether because we can put in 0.2. Now, you're wondering how, how do we know it's this a here, the, the net? Because you remember initially the block was subject when all the forces were balanced, the object, when all the forces were taken into account, the object accelerated up the plane. The net acceleration is this 0 0.2. Okay, so it goes in that end there. Okay, we don't start messing around putting MA here. It goes here. That's the net acceleration because that's what was observed. The block was, was undergoing acceleration of 0 0.2 up the plane. Okay, so having done that, that then gave us. Substituting into equation 2 here, we have 1.2 times g times cos 30 plus 6g sine 30 plus 6 times 0 0.2. And when we evaluate that, um, we find that we get 40.78 newtons, okay, parallel to the plane and up. Okay, so the total force was 40.78 newtons. All right, just remember um, one thing. With all of these problems, when you have blocks and masses and so on, imagine all the mass concentrated at the geometric centre of the object and all the forces act through that point. Then set up your diagram. Okay? So that's it then.